now that light is supreme is actually going to change the night itself it is a description most frightening but at one point of time it was a reality it was there and to a very large extent that night is still persisting but otherwise to bring about a change in such a night that itself is a tremendous miracle that itself is a tremendous miracle you see there is absolutely nothing only darkness no light light is supreme <laughs> don't know it all and to bring about a change in that night is something which is most miraculous most alchemical most wonderful i mean out as if out of nothing something is happening something is coming up so in that sense when life entered into matter life got overpowered by the forces of night by the forces of inconscience life got overpowered and she is no more what she was she had come from a supreme play consciousness force from sachidananda itself when she enters into this night she gets completely deformed completely changed completely altered but the miracle is her very entry into that world into that domain into that region is something which brought about a change in the night itself what was not there at all something has started happening you see there so that way one may say in a kind of a rhetorical manner as if life paid the price life sacrificed herself her glory her majesty her beauty her grandeur she sacrificed herself completely and she entered into this night but because of that because that sacrifice that yatna that sacrifice night could get changed something could start happening in the night and i will say perhaps that is a much mightier much glorious kind of first transformation which has taken place at all later on this happened that happened that happened that happened there is kind of a sequential thing but to bring about a change the very night is a great job and i think all the credit must go to life for that purpose you see all the credit must go to their life in fact when life was not present there at all it was only darkness a kind of silent change had taken place from the void matter came out and in conscient because of matter in conscient because of matter became very rigid it is sorry yeah it became very rigid very firm otherwise that firmness which is there in the inconscience would not have been there and anything would have come out would have got swallowed by the void itself so in that sense the inconscience became firm solid stronger now in that strong inconscience the entry of life to bring about a sort of a moment a stir an urge a change is something which is absolutely marvelous i will say that is a much bigger change more miraculous change than the coming of life and mind and super mind and all that thing. <laughs> those things will happen you see those things will happen but that moment i will say is something absolutely unique of course there is no history of it there is nobody to record it nobody to experience it but 
this thing did happen and only a yogi who can go back 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 in time to that point can see the entire sequence and realize and tell us something of that you see tell us something of that tell us something of that you see so as i was saying yes there was matter solid matter kind of a dry matter the entry of life in that condition of matter life got changed and what has happened is hell has sprung up the hell hell which was not there at all before that there was no hell at all there was no hell at all entry of life into material in conscience has brought about the hell so the springing of hell is a great advance <laughs> is a great progress in a certain thing of course hell will have its own play the soul may see its own those kind of things all that thing but then they will be kind of taken care of they will be kind of taken care of. but to bring about that hell is a great advance i will say out of nothing something is happening hell you see and what we are seeing is the description of hell you see the very beginning of movement of life in matter it is bound to be there it has to happen that way only see there life display to the spectator soul the shadow depths of a strange miracle that is a miracle that is a miracle shadow depths all that thing how she has made that miracle something absolutely wonderful most remarkable kind of a thing you see one cannot imagine how it could have happened the fact that the hell has appeared there is a great event <laughs> see is a great event and then things have started moving onward a strong and fallen goddess without hope goddess that life that goddess she stands for life she had entered there she is strong and she is fallen here without hope she has absolutely no hope there at the moment here because she is obscured deformed by some dire gorgon spell gorgon spell well of course gorgon refers to the greek mythology the head of the gorgon if you look at it you will die immediately completely you see in uh, odysseus Homer Odysseus, when Odysseus is going that region, he is told to cover up himself with something so that he does not look into Gorgon. He does not look into Gorgon, you see. And then later on, of course, Hercules kills the Gorgon. You see later on. See. So actually, there are three sisters: Gorgon, Medusa, and uh, another one. Three, three of them like that. Three. But there are three of them. I will tell you. I think I got. Let me see the names. <laughs> what is the first name? But all have snakes. Snakes. Steno, Steno, Steno. Who is the mighty one? Steno. Who is the mighty one? Then Uri, Uriel. Uriel and then Steno. And then Medusa. Steno. Medusa, you know, of course, very well. Medusa. The first. One, three, three sisters. Yeah. yeah. The Steno first. Steno. 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 Yes, T H N O. Steno. That is the mighty one. She is the mighty Steno. Then the other one is uh, uh, Uriel. Yeah. Uriel. Fast finger, you see. And the third one is Medusa. Yeah, Medusa. Medusa. Now, of course, you know Medusa. Whatever you touch, it becomes gold and something like that. You see. Does it that thing? So. Medusa statue, and but Medusa uh, is a uh, different type than the other two. In the sense that she is a mortal, the other two are not mortal. The other two are mortal. Medusa was killed. Medusa was later on killed by Hercules, and then from the blood of Medusa sprang up Pegasus. That God of inspiration, that divine God, the horse, horse is it? 
Medusa, from the blood of Medusa sprang. And poor Medusa, she was a very, very beautiful girl. Before she turned into Medusa, she before she turned into Medusa, very beautiful girl. But then she was raped by Poseidon, <laughs> and Athena she cursed her poor lady. I mean, instead of cursing him, she cursed him, and she became this <laughs> Medusa. You see, well, actually, because she was immortal, therefore uh, he could be, she could be killed. You see, now. it says that gorgon the blood coming from her right side will make a dead person living a dead person living blood coming from her left side will make the person die <laughs> immediately and of course she has got uh, Leaving snakes on her hair and all that kind of horrible thing, you see. That is the picture of uh, Medusa. So it's a very awful picture. I don't know how these people got those pictures. You see, I mean Homer, etc. They must have been really great occultists, great, uh, great uh, yogis in a certain sense. To see all those things. mythology is not just foolish. It's not just uh, imagination. It is some kind of an observation, a kind of an insight, some kind of a looking at things in a different manner. Or to there is a reality behind all that description. You see, we call it mythology, but they are really faculties, operations at a certain level. You see, so now defined by some dire gargant spell. So that is what has happened, as if some kind of spell has fallen on life, and she got completely changed, and she has become now hopeless lady here. You see. Defined by some dire gorgons, very strong spells. Your gorgon is him, as mighty harlot empress in a bush. <laughs> bush, of course, harlot. See, now there cannot be any any more repulsive kind of a picture than such a one. No Iliad, no Ezra Pound, no modernist can really give such a dire, naked kind of picture of thing like that. You see, see, they please these modernists think of reality and what you actually see that has been described and that kind of a thing. Realism, what you are actually seeing in life, it is what. But then this is something at a much much deeper level. And in the modernist poetry, the word bone is very common. Bone, bone. You see, this to say like that. You see, but this is much direr than that. You see, no, no modernist can really come to this uh, stage. So she able to is ultra modernist in that sense. You see, yes. and she the language a hey, as mighty hallowed empress. She is a empress, but she has become now a hallowed, a public woman in a booze, irreputable place. Booze also means irreputable place. French word, no? Huh? Bouge, it's a French word. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm coming to that. But but bouge also means uh, uh, an irreputable bouge. Bouge means uh, you take some kind of a mouth sick, mouth uh, the warmer, mouth. wine, wine to give you a taste, mouth amuser. Oh. Bouge in French means mouth amuser. The chef is preparing certain dishes, and he wants to taste. He 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 wants you to taste those dishes, and for that he gives you a kind of a mouth amuser, and that is called bouche. Because I looked in the dictionary. Yeah. And this is the place where you have this uh, woman harlot. Yeah, that is the common place. That is the harlot. That is the irreputable place. That is the. But but what I'm saying is bouche also means this. Bouche means mouth amuser. I mean, you are having a feast. The chef has prepared wonderful kind of a dish and all that thing. In order to enjoy it, you give something to amuse your mouth, and that thing is called bouche, basically. But here, of course, the sense is more of an irreputable place, basically. So, Shyamalan so can really go to such extremes. You see, he is a yogi. <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? I'm saying. Bush is there. It's a place where you have this woman. They said, they said this. 
But from the bush, the bush is, is it a la bush? No, la bush. La bush. La come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't know this word, that's why I looked in English, I didn't find it, and I found it in French. Labouche, <laughs> <laughs> it means this place. Yeah, <laughs> 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 what does he translate? <laughs> <laughs> of course, you'll use bush because it's a French word. Because it's a French word. And he, say, he said Labouche. No, le. He was. Le. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, obviously, <laughs> as mighty harlot empress in a boon's nude, unashamed, exulting, she appraised her evil face that was. So, she, what a naked face, naked thing, it's worse than Kali's dance. Naked Kali dancing on the head of the thing, that is terrible actually. Naked then. Actually, uh, let me see, I think I got a reference about Kali's dance also. 68.83. I have almost opened there. <laughs> that piece. Last line. Creation and destruction walls in arms. On the bosom of a torn and quaking earth, all rain into a world of Kali's dance. 68.83. 68.83. Ah, point eight three. Eight three. Creation and destruction walls in arms on the bosom of a torn and quaking earth. All rain into a world of Kali's dance, naked Kali's dance. Well, I mean, it's not exactly the same thing. This is, in fact, this is worse than Kali's dance, yeah. what we are seeing here. It's more like uh, the Medusa, the every face of Kali's beauty and charm. It's like the Medusa. Yeah. <laughs> As might a hallowed empress in a boon, nude, unashamed, exulting, she appreciates. I will scan this line as nude, as a headless line, a syllable, by a foot by itself. I am unashamed. Amphibrach. Unashamed. Exult, I am. She. Prick. Appraised. And I am again. So this is a, this is a very good example of a headless line, nude that itself stands as a foot. Yeah, unashamed amphibrach. You see, otherwise people will say nude and you see, it doesn't sound good. You see, yeah, it's a very strong case for uh, what is called the headless line. Headless line is single monosyllabic foot occurring at the beginning of the line. Nude and ashamed, exulting, she appraised her evil face of perilous beauty and charm. So there cannot be more pornographic anything than that. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> you see? <laughs> you see, than that, you see? Her evil face of perilous beauty and charm. And drawing panic to a shuddering kiss twixt the magnificence of her fatal breasts, allude to their abyss, the spirits fall. Well, this is what has happened. So, what a great price life has really paid for this transformative change to bring about a change in the inconscient matter. Yeah. What a price she has paid. See? That's a miracle, shadowy miracle, as this is. Across the field of sight, across the field of sight, she multiplied as on a scenic film or moving plate, the implacable splendor of her nightmare form, implacable splendor of her nightmare form, scenic film or moving plate, 
Well, you see, in those days, they used to use the plates for camera, for photography. <laughs> you know, this is human is reminded of, he's, he's kind of stuck with that, you see. <laughs> now, we have got uh, modern cameras out to be different, you see, digital cameras, absolutely. You don't need even a plate, you don't need a film, nothing, you see. Uh, the image is stored straight away, you see. As an acidic film or being played, the implacable splinter, implacable, you cannot satisfy its hunger, its thirst, implacable, splinter, half a nightmare palms. This is what she is. Across the figure, she multiplied as no she sings. This splinter on the dark background of a soulless world, she stays between a lurid light and shade. Her drama the sorrow that I have written on the agonized nerves of living things. What a terrible description, no, this one. Her drama is the sorrow of the depths. Drama is the sorrow that I have written on the agonized nerves of living things. Epics of horror and grim majesty. Arise statues, spat and stiffened in lies mud. Arise statues, spat. The statues are spat, <laughs> spitting, you see. <laughs> spat and stiffened in lies mud, you see. A glut of hideous form and hideous deed. Plenty of, I mean, you are a kind of multiplying, but plenty of, you see, glutting, gluttony, full. Paralyzed pity in the heart and the breast. So pity itself gets hardened now. There is no more pity. It becomes stiff, you see, like that. A glut of hideous form means plenty of form. Uh, glut means uh, uh, too many, you see, no, it's not the same. Gluttony, greedy, like that, keep on eating, you see, in the same. A glut of hideous form and hideous day. A glut of hideous form. So the third foot is an apple. And hey, D, yes, D. Last foot is also an anapis, you see. A glut, I am, of hate. I am sorry, of hate, I am. D, yes, form. Third foot is an anapis. And hate, I am. Yes, D, again, I am, of anapis, you see. Paralyzed pity in the hardened breast. In booze of sin, the night repairs of light. In booze of sin, the night repairs of light. See what what kind of vocabulary she given to has, you see, tremendous. And he uses his command of the English language in such a masterly way. In booze, well, I can not understand. But he says, night repairs of light, night repair. The place where you go and rest, that is called repair. You are referring to Washington. It means you are going to <laughs> Washington, you staying there for a while, staying in repairing. That is the phrase you say, repair. See. Same way, night repair. So in the night you go and kind of stay there, live there for a while, you see. In booths of sin and night repairs, what kind of repair? What kind of place that thing is? Oh, vice. Means you are repairing yourself in the vice there. You are repair, you are staying in a booth which is of sin. You see. Sin is the booth, vice is the night repair, you see in that sense. You see. In booths of sin and night repairs of vice. Style infamy in the body's concupiscence. <laughs> Obviously, you are in that kind of a public place there, you see. So there is a concupiscence and sordid imagination etched in flesh, turned lust into a decorative art. <laughs> terrible picture, you see, terrible yeah. picture. Sordid imagination, etched in place. Your body itself, place itself, as if you're carving on that place, these sordid imaginations, figures, turn into decorative art, they have become, see, as you will be tattooing on the physical body, so that it is happening on the place itself. The sordid imagination, etched in flesh, mark their blood. I mean, flesh itself is you are etching on that, marking that thing, engraving. Turn lust into a decorative arm. Uh, he said, 
very frightening kind of a, a picture, you see, very... I no modernist can really come to closer to this kind of thing. You cannot imagine. Abusing nature's gift, her powers. Abusing nature's gift, her power skill. Immortalized sown grain of living death. Nature has given a gift to you, yeah. but then you are using that gift for what? To sow death. You are putting the grain of death in the sink. Nature has given you a gift of life, and what you are doing is you are sowing the seed of death there. Abusing nature's gift. So she has done, and this kind of thing has happened. Her pervert skill, because the pervert skill of life, this has happened. Immortalized the sown gift. So, in the world, death, living death, has become immortal. Because she has put that gift there, she is living death. Now, there is a reference about this living death. I think I have got some. Let me see. In this line, across the field of sight, she multiplied. Across the field of sight. This is what we have got here. Across the field of sight. The revised edition has across his field of sight. His of the revised the edition, nineteen ninety three. Across his field of sight. Who he? The the uh, uh, huh? New new edition of Savitri. No, I know. He he. His 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 means Ashwapati. Obviously, he should stand for Ashwapati only. I think that is uh, not really, really proper at all. I mean, in the whole description, you don't get that thing at all. You are unnecessarily bringing Ashwapati here, you see. It is he who is seeing all that thing. Across the page, you know, sight. It is so beautiful by itself. You see, it won't say, across his field of sight, it becomes very weak. It is understood that across the field of sight, his sight. Okay. It is understood automatically, you see. She multiplied on a scenic film, a moving plate, implacable splendor. As if Ashwapati is getting kind of a secondary picture of the whole thing. Not the original. She multiplying, you see. It's very, I'll say, it's a very unfortunate. Maybe, maybe in some earlier draft, she would have put his field. But then the fact that you have here the, how has that his got changed into the? Of that, we have no idea. It was obligatory on the part of the editors of the revised edition to explain that. Why? Why they have changed? The history of the whole composition. That is the whole problem with this one. On the dark background of a soulless, we are trying to see this line now. Abusing nature's gift, her power skill. Immortalize sown grain of a living death. Immortalize sown grain of living death. It's a very beautiful description. Very powerful description. Now, there is a little earlier reference, 57.7, sorry, 55.7. A hidden fusion, conscious of his force, a vague and lurking presence everywhere, a contrary doom that threatens all things may, that threatens all things may, death figuring as a dark seed of life. Death figuring as a dark shade of life. Here we have got immortalized the sown grain, the dark seed, the sown grain. He has kind of elaborated on that phrase. Here. Sown grain of living death. Obviously, when you are talking, when you are sowing a seed, it has to be living. Otherwise, it will not grow. <laughs> 
therefore living death living death so god has to be there because of living and we have got here dark seed of life seed of life the same thing death is the dark seed of life yes in other words it is because of death something is growing in a certain sense therefore death is playing a kind of a positive role in the promotion of life in the promotion of life he modified the sound grade of living them in a mud goblet for the bacchic wine to satisfy gave the thesis of a god oh my god so this is all greek mythology completely you see in a mud goblet that is what the greek used to use they used to goblet it for drinking wine bacchic wine you see all that. and they should have uh, amethyst cup for drinking wine cup made of amethyst amethyst stone gem yeah amethyst and the uh, the amethyst uh, amethyst means basically how ever you may drink you don't get drunk <laughs> how so much you drink you don't get drunk that is the amethyst amethyst don't get drunk at all so that is the take wine amethyst it's a stone no blue bluish with the bluish of the color the magnet the what magnet ah oh yeah what's the color bluish color stone they used to make the they used to drink wine in the in the amethyst cup you see like that so that you don't get drunk you can drink as much as you like is the god to that you see in a goblet so the packet wine so this goblet is actually made of amethyst <laughs> to yeah. satir gave the thesis of a god satir satir is the attendant of the anusias patas patas of patas satir with horns on his head sometimes they say it is a half animal half man but sometimes they say he is half goat and a man with a horn on that satir that's the biggest figure enjoying lust and merry making in that thirsts of a god staff of a god thirsts that is what the anusis carries in his hand stuff made of pine and then he used to carry and go around that thing so thirsts of a god thanusis of thirsts the staff that stick has been given to this that is He was absolutely at home in Greek mythology, you see, and he uses it so freely, so casually, so easily in, in a mud goblet. But this is a mud goblet, not of <laughs> all the bacchic wine. To a satyr, gave the kisses of a god. Man, enjoy. He, he is a creature who enjoys in merry making, luxury, in things like that. Satyr, you see, impure, sadistic. with grimacing mouths grey foul intentions gruesome and macabre gruesome and macabre came television to the dawns of night this is what is coming and seeing they are coming like images from the dawns of night he is seeing them television well in those days in 1940 it was kind of getting popular television you see <laughs> it was not so Machine. But it has started coming in television. 1944. No, but in 1942 there was no television. No, no, of course, yes, yes. In 1942 there was no television. At home, but it was already since the 40s. Yeah, really, yeah, yeah. In 1942 there must have been early television. Yes, it was before 60s the television. But, uh, you see this this thing this thing was it was seven to around 1942 43 44 yeah big boxes i know yeah but uh, television television i will i will check with the history of television but uh, yeah. yeah but this this was already in 1942 and otherwise the world television would not be in my seven one day so there 
But it could be like he is saying, Mark, uh, uh, verb, tele, vision. It means vision from uh, Et etymology far. Etymology from vision from far. Tele, a tele objective, a tele lens, this already exists this for the camera. Maybe. Yeah. A tele lens for Great the camera. Great, powerful inventions of gruesome and macabre. Now, this picture is, of course, very dire, very gruesome, very deep picture, let me say. There is a picture of La Dame Saint Merci. La Dame Saint Merci. You heard of that, no? La Dame Saint Merci. La Dame, a lady without any mercy. Ah, Saint Merci, yeah. La Dame Saint Merci. La Dame Saint Merci. Ah, La Dame Saint Merci. La Dame Saint Merci. Merci, 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 Merci. Yeah, but who is she? Who is she? Who is, she? Is, she? who is this madame? Madame, I tell you. Now, there is a very beautiful poem by kids. Ah. The title ah. is Madame Samarsi. Okay. And uh, she used to deal, attract noble people, knights or heroic people. By her charm, by her uh, gestures and all that thing, she used to Honey trap them <laughs> completely. And then she should drive them to her place and enjoy with them. And after that, she used to kill them. Sam Mercy. She used to kill them, you see. Sam Mercy. Lada Mercy. So that is a very, very powerful poem by Kirs. Lyrical poem. Very long poem also. So, it, it is something of that kind, but this picture is much direr than that, you see. She is enjoying, she is catching hold of a powerful knight, beautiful knight, strong knight. She rides his horse and she goes to her place and all that thing, and then ultimately she kills it. Her craft of Indians. Her craft engages in monstrosity, <laughs> impatient of all natural shape and poise, a gate of new exoteric line, the opening gate of new exoteric line, gave caricature a stark reality. What looks only like a small sketch of that name, stark reality, and art parades of beard. Distorted form and gargoyle mask, obscene and terrible, trampling to tormented posture, the thorns and gargoyle we are seen on the, on the big buildings in you know, a gargoyle mask, through that the, sure. the rainwater is still drained out. Gargoyle mask, obscene and terrible. Well, Normally, all of our gargoyles are not obscene, you see. They are quite, uh, quite uh, decorative, quite nice, you see. Most of the gargoyles, you see. But I have seen a small video. Gargoyle. And then, uh, you have seen that video? No. I have seen a video. Very beautiful. Yes. On YouTube, is there, gargoyle mark. Yeah. So there is, there is a, in, in the in the public square, there is in the, in the public square, there is a big statue. Lots of strange heads, you know. It's not human, not animals. Yeah. But in English, we said like this. I don't. I got good. In a plaza or a public place like that. In the cathedral. And there is a statue like that, thing And the person with the gargoyle, the gargoyle mask, and then. If a lady or somebody is walking across, she will ask a certain question to him. Yeah. And <laughs> yes, that. she will ask a certain question. This is like that. And he will give a reply. Yeah. She will yeah. reply also. Gargoyle mask, you see. Very active kind of thing. Well, I mean, uh, it, it is quite interesting uh, that, uh, that uh, YouTube. I don't know if you have seen that? No. no. You should check that thing. Gargoyle mask. Gargoyle mask, obscene. But this is, of course, this obscene. That doesn't look very obscene. That looks very healthy. She is out of curiosity in asking, will I be successful with my life here? I have got my girlfriend, my first friend here. 
will that materialize? So he will ask, and then he will answer all kind of questions like that. That Garuda will ask. You see. But he is very prompt immediately. I don't know how they have uh, programmed the whole thing, but the answers come immediately, and he speaks out all that. <laughs> really, time to talk and it passes. Tom says, "Time for what a talking." Happen to torment in process of torment, and the glory will give its worshiper, and in the glory will give its worshiper. See, this is the evil worshiper now. She made violence great and submitted fill the whole process. The violence has become great, and fill has become not sublime sublimation. A dragon power of reptile energy, dragon power of reptile. Energy. And strange the bubbling of growing foam, and serpent and the scowling in the mire drew adoration of a gleam of light. Wild is great and superb this way. A dragon power, growling foes, serpent. They are the creatures not crawling on the yeah. same thing. So earlier uh, we had the description of. Gorgon spell. You had the description of Label, the Sama, the uh, Ladam Sama. Yeah. Say, now you have got the <laughs> dragon and the things. All nature pulled out of her prey and pain was twisted into an unnatural pull. Repulsion stimulated inner desire. Now, see, this is the price that had to be paid if you want to shake up in conscience. This is why you can't. This is the power of inconscience so terrible. But then somebody has to do it if you want to really get out of it. To bring out something out of it, you have to pay the price. Repulsion stimulated inert desire. Agony was made a red spice food for this. <laughs> red spice already. It is spicy. It is red again. Hot. <laughs> it is hot. More than uh, uh, more red chili than the Indians eat, <laughs> or the Mexicans. Have you seen Mexican chili? Yeah. My mm. God! No, no, more than Indian. That is no. <laughs> <laughs> Mexican <laughs> chili is really hot. They are green chilies, but really, really hot. Much hotter than the Indian chili. More than Indian? Oh my, my! <laughs> Agony was made. So if you go to a Mexican restaurant, ask for Mexican food. You will get that red, that, that chili also. You see, hatred mm -hmm. was thrust to the world of lust, and torture to the form of an embrace. Torture to the form of an embrace. My God, yeah. actually, in the Mahabharat, there is a story. You know the two camps, boys are fighting mm -hmm. Pandavas and Kauravas. Yeah. And the father of the Kauravas, Dhritarashtra, blind king, who has hundred sons, means hundred vices, so to say, hundred sons. And there is there are five Pandavas, virtuous people on the other side, you see. So hundred vices, or five virtuous, hundred vices, they are kind of fighting. Now this father of vices, Dhritarashtra. He is the uncle of the Pandavas. Hmm. He is the uncle of the Pandavas. So he kind of lives hmm. on the strongest Pandava, Bhima. He is very strong, very powerful kind of thing. And he thinks that he tries to think that let me embrace him and crush him to death because he knew that. Bhima could easily kill his greatest son Duryodhana. So the best thing is eliminate Bhima right there itself completely. You see. So he invites him, my dear, let you come and let us meet and talk and that kind of thing. So Bhima goes there and then he embraces. But Bhima is so strong, he is helpless. You see, <laughs> completely. So he is arm of an embrace, torture. He is not affected by that. You see. A ritual anguish consecrated that there was anguish consecrated. Worship was offered 
to the undivine, worship was offered to the undivine. That is what I had told you earlier, how Narada sees in the Patara the sons of Diti, the hostile powers, the enemies of God, how they have got their own kingdom in the Patara, in the lowest world, near the land, near the world. <laughs> how they are kind of praying and worshipping their God, the Antivine. The way we worship or the gods worship the divine, exactly a kind of a counterpart of that thing is there in the underworld. The sons of Diti, undivine son, they also worship the God who is undivine in manners. That is it. Worship was offered to the undivine, that is the image. And then Narad goes back to the heaven and tells, you know, what did you see in Pata? And he enjoys, yes, Vishnu, the divine himself, who has taken that form, he is being worshipped by his people there. Because Narad sees everywhere nothing but the presence of his Vishnu. Vishnu is there in the lower world and divine for a purpose. And they are worshipping him. A new aesthetic, naturally, therefore, it's a new aesthetic of infernos are that train a mind to love what the soul hates. So, mind is trained by this art. Art trains mind. <laughs> you see, art trains mind. That train a mind to love what the soul hates. Impose elation on the quivering nerve and pull the unwilling body to vibrate. Too sweet and too harmonious to excite in this regime. He saw the being's coat. Beauty was banned because beauty is too sweet, but she is banned. She is too harmonious. She is banned. Man. The heart feeling dull in the sleep and cherished in their place. Sensations the thrill. The world was proved for just of sense appeal. So it's only the sense appeal, sensuousness only everywhere. The world is proved for just of appeal. Here, whole material intellect was a judge. So from the senses, we are talking about entering into the reason. Here, cold material intellect was a judge. Cold he does not really know the nice things of life or beauty of joy, therefore cold, and needed sensual prick and jog and lash that his heart dryness and dead nerves might be some passion and power and epic point of life. So that is reason then a new philosophy. He is describing now all the things. A new philosophy. Theorize is right. So they have you built up entire structure of philosophy to justify evil, the work of evil. Glory in the shimmering rot of decadence. Glory in the shimmering rot of decadence. Or gray a python force pursues you speed and hand with knowledge the primal good. The philosophy is giving that reason, that arming primal brute with that thing. Glory in the shimmering. Glory talking in the shame and rain. Rot and abyss of decade, decade and spirit last year. Again, we fight from force, pursue a ship speed, and hand with knowledge. It's a very, very sadistic picture. Very sadistic to see something. Glory in the shimmering rot of decadence over life and matter, only brooding above. Mind changed the image of the rampant beast. He scrambles in the pit to dig for truth. Mind is scrambling in the pit for truth and life is searched. With subconscious flares. When it is searching for truth, it, with what, with, what, what kind of flares? Cotton of torches, 
players, they used to, in the World War I, they used to taught these players, you say, in the night, to go from place to place. Subconscious players, and lighting is served with subconscious players. Then, bubbling rose, selling the upper air, bubbling rose, selling the upper air, even the upper air is now selling because of that. The filled and pestering tickets of the abyss, the filled and pestering tickets of the abyss, the filled I am, and pest I am, arranged sick, third put in an abyss of the filling, the abyss, and to back, last put. This it called positive fact and real life. Well, this is a realistic picture. This is a realistic picture of life. This now composed the fetid atmosphere, ugly smelling atmosphere. A wild beast passion crept from secret night. Why is this passion? Well, it's a passion. The hell is coming out. Why is passion crept from secret mm -hmm. night? To watch his prey with fascinating eyes. Around him, take a fire. Around him. Now this is Ashwapati. This is definitely Ashwapati. Around him, like a fire. With fluttering. Around him. Around him. Around him, like a fire. With fluttering tongue, they are blowed and loved a bestial ecstasy. The air was packed with longings, bruised and fierce, crying and stinging in a monotonous swarm, pressed with a noxious hum into his mind, Ashwapati. Thoughts that could poison nature's heavenly breath. Thoughts that could poison nature's heavenliest breath, forcing reluctant lips astray in the sight. Thoughts astray in the sight. Thoughts that could poison nature's heavenliest breath, forcing thoughts that forced in nature's sight, acts that reveal the mystery of hell. Means thought that could poison nature, acts that reveal the mystery of hell. Now it is these thoughts and these acts which are really showing you the mystery of hell. Thought that could poison, thought that could poison nature's heavenly self, forcing reluctant lips. Means thoughts assail the sight, acts that reveal the mystery of hell. Now, this is what I am telling you. This is the mystery of hell. We started with that mystery of hell. How is this a mystery? Why it is a mystery with all that thing? It is a mystery because there was nothing. The rigidity of matter in inconscience has to be shaken up and woken up and maybe very Frightening kind of figures are emerging, but then that should not matter. The fact that you have managed to stir matter is an enormously big gain. So the hell which is there now has kind of promoted evolution further, carried things further, you see. Hell, that's a mystery of hell. That is, although this is a very frightening picture, Ugliness is there, all the human life has fallen. See the kind of price life has paid for all that thing to happen to promote, promote evolution that we see. To check matter in this manner. Something. Actually, there could not have been hell. There is no hell without life. The entry of life in matter. Is hell. At this point, entry of mind in life in matter, entry of mind in life in matter is sin. 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 Entry of life 
in matter is the element. Entry of mind in life in matter is sin. Because you see, for instance, animals, they don't have any sin. They don't have any sense of sin. These creatures we are seeing here, there, there is no sense of sin with them at all. There is no sense of sin. They are going by the life force. But then the moment mind enters into it, then it starts thinking, it is good, it is bad, it is promotion, it is right. It starts reasoning out. And then the element of sin starts appearing in your consciousness. Oh, like that. is coming then. See, you are hurting somebody. I mean, at that point, a crude person does not feel that you are doing something wrong. But a person who has a bit of sensitivity and thought, you say he is doing something wrong. So the sense of sin arises with mind. In matter. In, in life in matter, you see. Before life only in matter helps. But they are also then in the category of promoting evolution. Hell, sin, reason, beyond reason, sin go on this man. So the early stages of evolution that way are in a way very drastic, very frightful. Luckily we have crossed them. Luckily we were not there, <laughs> but this has happened, you see, all that thing, and we are here. Acts that way, the mystery, he uses the word mystery of hell, mystery. Earlier we had the miracle, mystery of hell, very powerful, very meaningful phrase, you see. Shevendo does not use words without any meaning, you see. Thought that could poison, thought, assay the sight. Thought that could poison nature's heavenly breath, forcing the return to its assay this side. Thought assay this side. Acts reveal the mystery of hell. All that was there was on this pattern made. That is the mystery of life of hell. That is the mystery of hell. Pardon me? Now we move on to the next section. <laughs> Section 17, so, 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 sorry, section 59, it has 17 sentences, 83 lines, and 628 words. It's one of the shortest sections, very short words, but all frightening. Also, <laughs> it's not short and sweet. It and is. Sri <laughs> Aurobindo, he is so this. Yeah, oh of course, God. of course. <laughs> See? When, when he saw, he encountered, he, see, when he says, I had an assignation with the night, I had an assignation with the night, he calls himself the pilgrim of night. Yeah. And he meets night face to face, he meets night to face, he <coughs> sonnet, pilgrim of night, 1938, pilgrim of night, he is the pilgrim of night. So night is a goddess in a certain sense. And the pilgrimage is going on there. I had an assignation and then I went there to woo her dangerous heart. To woo her dangerous heart. The rendezvous, he, he uses the word rendezvous in the sonnet, you see. Assignation is nice, very good. So, this is that picture of sonnet, you see. So now we come. So this is a short section, but short is not sweet always. <laughs> a race possesses now he's indulging a race, he's talking of a group of people now completely. A race possesses inhabited those paths. He has located those places that hell and all those places, those paths of hell. And in that hell, there are people who are living. A race possessed inhabited those parts. A force demoniac lurking in man's depths. Now it's coming to man actually. What is really happening is there behind man. That he is suppressed by the harsh human law. Suppressed by harsh human means we have managed to some extent to suppress them by our human law. You see, human law. 
is true otherwise they are really sitting there with an you know, or with a calm and sovereign eyes of thought can inspire and perfect the soul can inspire and perfect the soul upheaval great changes taking place here arise and calling me they are suppressed within us by our human law but shaking can earthquake can take place and he can suddenly jump up bump arise and calling us native night what through the reason human law reason it can forget it can dismiss reason completely completely occupy the life and stand its foot on the shaking ground the demoniac force shaking down this was the form and this was for them the beings claiming to the force demoniac can arise calling the native night it can throw the reason occupy life stamp its foot on nature's shaking ground this was for them the beings claiming coal now this them is for me a little difficult plural the race for them the race yeah. the race of these people the race of whom it stands for them see he talks of he doesn't talk of it. the only way i could relate the thing is to race race and the plural yeah. Race is a plural. Race is a plural. But normally, uh, as a collective noun, it can be used as a plural also. Race, race, races. You say, eh? Yeah, yeah but race, race means many. Many, many people in the race. Yeah. Many people in the race. Many. The them would mean only for he what put, is it? He put force. No, it is singular. No, no, he put it in plural. For these forces, at which forces he need? No, demonia clerk. Uh, they, That's why I was looking. Demon, a force is not plural. Not the demonic force. No, no because he put it uh, singular. But here he speak plural. So maybe. No, that force is singular here. You see, this line, and stamp its hoof. Its hoof is for force. is for is for force on nature's shaking ground that is a fire and earthquake this was for them this is putting a colon therefore it is kind of isolated from that colon now and stamp is hoof on nature's shaking ground this was for them they are being claiming to for them for the trees let me go now this word who appears three times in savitri 56.18 59.2 and 141.45 who who on nature See, this is a hoof without any splitting, like a horse hoof. Fifty-six point one eight, fifty-nine point two, one forty-five point, and a plural hooves appears nine times in Kavi three. Nine ah. times. The first line. Huh? The first line. Can I see the no first? Yeah, first line. A race. A race possessed inhabited those parts. I think he is speaking. This those forces, those forces, those forces, need those parts. Those parts, what we have seen earlier. I think this will refer to those parts. They may refer to those parts. Parts. I see. He is the being. You see. What What are those parts? What we have seen earlier, hell and all those things we have seen. Yeah. So those so, are the parts. So maybe then it refer to those parts. See. So uh, uh, those parts, parts is parts is a neutral noun, whereas here them is something uh, personal. 
पास रीजन मिल जाए वेल लेट लेट अस थिंक अगेन ऑन दैट Yeah, I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> This night and tomorrow. Yeah, well, you, you also. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still wondering what that game could be. Yeah. The only way I could understand so far is race, plural noun. It should, of course, stand for force. For force. A mighty energy, a monstrous god, hard and strong. Implacable to the weak, it stared at the hard, unfitting world it made with the stony eyes of its fixed idea. Well, that is the description. It stared at the hard, unfitting world it made with the stony eyes. Stony eyes. Well, you have got statue eyes on the temple. Also, you have got uh, the cow statue eyes, the stony eyes. But they are looking at things. Those eyes are looking at things. Stony alley, all this fixed idea, this fixed idea, again energy. His heart was drunk with a dire hunger swine. In other suffering, felt the thrill of delight of death and ruin. The grandiose music heard. Very perverted. Very perverted. His heart was drunk. Yeah, is that force? Demonia force. All that energy, mighty energy. Yeah, who monster is this? God. Who is this monster? Monster God. Does God. he have a name? No. No name. Who? The monster God. We yeah, have monster God. A name? Name? No name. No name. No. <laughs> Demonia force. His heart yeah, was drunk, but actually he is talking about statue also. His heart was drunk with a dire hunger swine. Hunger swine. How do you understand hunger swine? <laughs> hunger is a wine. No, it's a lie. No. The the hunger has a wine. Hunger has a wine. Yeah. <laughs> this one. What is what it would mean? Hunger is a wine. It's an addiction. It's an addiction. No, but. You see, hunger spine is a little unusual. You see, what it would mean, hunger spine, one who is hungry is wine. I would say it's a no. <laughs> But I, I mean, the, the the plain grammar would mean hunger as a wine. His heart was drunk with a dire hunger spine. One who is hungry. And is drinking yeah. with the hunger of with the hunger of a drinker. Hunger of wine. The hunger of hunger, hunger of. Uh, uh, in so. other suffering, felt a thrill of delight that is very perverted, you see. And of death and ruin, the grand use of. But I think this is the law of five souls, the law of death yeah. and death, because um, I mean, you know, this life is lying here. Um, death and ruin, the ground, this music heard. This is like when everything was destroyed in the Second World War. The whole world was in living in oh. ruins, and then these forces they triumphed. They so this is fight so in that. I mean, then they try to destroy, destroy, destroy. And the monster god are those two. That's mm -hmm. what I believe. That's why I had asked you. Uh, Possibly. Yeah. yeah. What else can yeah. be? I mean, they are at the root of those things. <laughs> they are at the root. Yeah. But this line, his heart, yeah, was drunk, yeah, with a dire, with a prick, dire hung, spandy, as wine, yeah. So you have got a, yeah, you have got a, yeah, you have got prick, you have got spandy. You got a. His heart was drunk with the tire hunger. See the R alliteration and the S alliteration, very poetic also. See, in other suffering, see how how cruel, how mischievous, how perverted it is, no? And of death and ruin, the grandiose music heard. To have power, 
to be master the soul virtue that is all i want i don't care what happens to you will you get killed or you live or survive i don't care what i want is power and monarchy and power it claimed the whole world for evils living room the whole world is a living room for him to enjoy his heart is grim totalitarian reign is party so he is the monarchy the king he is the ruler absolute ruler in party is grim totalitarian reign nobody can oppose it dicta dictatorship complete the cruel destiny of being thing all on one plan was shaped and standardized all on one plan again i will put it like this it is not all on one plan it is all on one plan again headless man on one plan and it was shaped i am and stand and last two last two days correct stand the dies under a dark dictatorship death this way so this is dictatorship autarky complete power full sovereignty in streets and houses and councils and homes being she met who look like living men and climb the speed upon high wings of dawn but however all that is subhuman why and lower than the lowest reptile crawl the reason meant for nearness to god well that really defines the meaning the purpose of reason reason is there for what to make you closer to god the purpose of reason is to take you closer to god reason man for nearest records mm. by reason you would mm. like to be closer to the god but normally we don't do that thing at all we become agnostic we become <laughs> the opposite also by reason you by the reason man for nearest records and uplift to heavenly scale with the touch of mind that is the function of the mind to uplift you up to take you up completely to uplift to heavenly scale by the touch of mind only in hand by sin lightning ray they are in bond nature's rai monstrosity so they have to utilize reason they have to utilize mind for their own rai monstrosity only in hand by sin lightning ray they are in bond nature's rai monstrosity the reason which is meant for this taking the cloth to uplift mind only enhance what did they do that reason is employed by them for this purpose that mind is employed for this purpose you see so in a way reason and mind are helpless they can feel this case they can feel that case also it means that is basically this although well actually it is understandable reason man for nearness regard from the vital being you have become a rational being and rational being is the one who is between the beast and god it is the link between the beast and the god rational being you see but the rational being is not really firm yet he can be very easily overpowered by the beast and drag down completely he can be or moment get lifted up also by pure reason he can rise to high high great climb high we have got to have one those aphorism reason is the helper reason is the power reason is the helper reason is the power reason is the helper it takes you nearer to god but if you stick only to reason then it becomes bad you are not able to cross beyond reason you have to go into intuition you have to go into higher realms of our perception or to open our reason to help us nearness to god at this stage of evolution it is necessary also and mind in same way only in often 
they are in bar, nature, and I, emancipation, 